This is Douglas fir. Douglas fir. It's not native, but it's a very important timber tree. Uh, you know, like at my house, we were teaching stuff that's real important. You might want the red pine, you might see red pine. You go into the Pacific Northwest, or you go into uh, a lot of the Rocky Mountain, inner Rocky Mountain area, uh, you'll run into Douglas fir. There's a lot of it. Up in Washington State and Oregon, this is a really, really widely tree farmed tree. Okay, it's grown in plantations. It's like how loblolly is grown in the southeast. That's grown in the Pacific Northwest. So it's an extremely important commercial tree uh, from nowhere around here. Okay, we we grow them as Christmas trees and we plant them as ornamentals as well. So now, how do we identify? Them? Well, one, it's not a true fur at all. So the foliage is not on the twig like a little suction cup. Remember furs? Like white fur right behind you there? Uh, that's on there with a little suction cup. If you look at the foliage here, you pull it off and look at one, it's got a little petiole. Like a hemlock has a little petiole. And the genus on this tree is Pseudosuga. What does that mean? Fake hemlock. False fake hemlock. Yeah, fake hemlock. So that's why they gave it that name, the genus. Yeah. So Douglas fir, uh, named by Douglas, thought botanists thought it looked kind of like firs. Plus, it, where this grows, there's there's firs everywhere. So kind of reminded them of all the other firs. Uh, but then he saw how the needles were attacked and thought, okay, false hemlock. So those two. Now. So that's something about identifying it. The best thing, I think, are the buds. The buds are sharply pointed, cone-like. They're very much like a sugar maple bud on a conifer. So they're, they're going to be your most sharply pointed evergreen conifer bud with all anything you guys have got. Firs are round and resin-coated. Spruces sort of look like tiny little flowers almost, real loose scales, look like little roses. Or like a sugar maple like that. Right? This is a difference from firs. Fir trees, real firs, there aren't going to be cones on the ground. They disintegrate. ABs, right? They disintegrate. We talked about that was a long time ago. That was week one when fir. So this has cones that fall on the ground. And they have, you know, regular cone scales, but then they have this peculiar thing. They have this extra thing coming out called a bract. B-R-A-C-T, bract. And on Douglas fir, they're thought to look like, and I think they really do look like this, a rat diving in a hole. <laughs> Two legs and its tail. It's a rat diving in a hole. You guys see it? Two feet, tail. Wait, look at so, or a rat, I've heard people say a rat caught in a trap. Douglas fir is second only to redwood in height. In height. So it's bigger than sequoia. In height. There's Douglas firs routinely are over 300 feet tall. Uh, because they get so big and grow fast, that's why they're sought after timber tree. They make really good uh, lumber. And... Uh, they, of course, cultivate it, you know, with thinning, and everything like blah, 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 fertilizer, weeding, thinning, pruning, all those things are done very intensively cultured Douglas fir is. Now, oh, by the way, it also has a really pleasant smell, like, a, like tangerine feels, like white fir. So you got to remember the fir characteristics versus this has a petiole and a sharp pointed bud.